Hey, welcome back to my software journal. My name is Ronald, and today's topic is how did my mechanical engineering degree prepare me for software engineering? So in short, it didn't. Uh, a surprise. You had the elements of electrical engineering, uh, not dealing with software engineering. Mechanics of materials, not dealing with software engineering. You had thermodynamics, not close. Um, you had thermal system design, mechanical system design, fluid mechanics. I love that course. Still not doing it. Engineering mechanics, dynamics, and etc. Still not doing it. However, there were some courses that actually exposed me to, you know, coding, which actually helped me understand that I really wanted to do this as a career later on in life. Now I'm here. These courses were, of course, you know, you had the computer programming for engineers. Now the curriculum changed around, so it's like computer programming for engineers, MATLAB, because I guess like that C++ was too hard for, you know, mechanical engineers. It was like a lead out course. I really got to learn programming there. I actually started coding with code blocks, which was the first IDE I actually used. Of course, my first program was Hello World. I was like, yo, why didn't no one tell me about this? It's like, print out hello on the computer screen and I thought that was just so fascinating. Now I'm here and I'm like doing big stuff, building systems, building applications. Yo, I came a long way. There was another course as well that got me in the sense of like I wanted to do, you know, programming. This is more of like kind of like embedded system type program. So this, this, this course was Dynamics and Control System Design Lab. The IDE of that was LabVIEW and they use this uh, programming language called G, which is like a graphic programming language. Yeah, essentially what it did was, I usually, I mainly use that for, you know, uh, robotics during my undergrads. So we had like these labs that we had to essentially uh, look at and, you know, provide a solution based off of the, you know, apparatus setup that we had for it. So it gave me a sense of understanding of some software development life cycle. Um, there was a problem. The problem was, you know, you had to get this robotic arm to draw a circle and research the solution. We had to figure out like the equation of the dynamics of the arms because that dynamics of the arm was going to use in the program to figure out how much, you know, force or energy we should apply to each motor server based off of those, you know, those joints. Design out that system and how that would work out and, you know, create a prototype, you know, mock this stuff up in the lab view and, you know, essentially have your if statements, but it was like a block or some kind. And so, yeah, if this, you know, output is this and that, or this angle was this small, then that's some, some sort of that. And it was it was just like really cool because now like I'm looking at it back then it's like yo I was actually coding I didn't even know it even though it was you know like a graphic programming language it was still coding in the sense that I was getting some kind of input and I was getting an output and that's essentially a lot of what programming languages do you you get an input you output something you know test it improve it. And then, you know, once you get it to the fine-tuned state, then you present the solution. And we wrote like papers in some sort to, you know, present our solution, our findings based off of what, what we drew up or what we coded. So that was really cool. Another one was Intro to Numerical Methods of Engineering Analysis. So that's a long, long stretch, right? This actually was used in MATLAB, which is also a, you know, programming interface type thing. It's actually it's an IDE, um, but they have their own little type language to it. And I mainly use that for, you know, data imports and analysis. So, you know, plotting data points, you know, as you will see on your calculator back in the days, you apply a whole bunch of data points, graphing out these data points. So um, we create like empirical line on these data points and then you get some empirical equation based off of those data points so it, it was very helpful in the sense that it, like it helped me out a lot 
in my undergrad for you know doing the stuff I need to do. Plus, it helped me on understand you know just some basic control flows of how how that stuff works because importing from a C CSV file and then make plotting out those data points on the computer is just my imagination is just blown by that because I never got exposed to this when I was younger. I wish I were exposed to that and of course you know back in the day computers were like way more expensive and you know resources and all that stuff but yeah you know that's that's essentially yeah mainly I wanted to get like mainly got exposure to coding and I knew I wanted to do it for a career. I was never told uh, such a career path when I was younger and now I had to figure out how can I go about doing that. I mean, I was already to the point of my mechanical engineering degree, engineering degree that I didn't want to switch back because I was like one more year. Sometimes engineering degrees can go into like five years if you don't do it every single summer because I had internships and research internships and stuff. I wasn't there for most summers and you know summers actually cost it for me so I had to work. My scholarship didn't cover summers and I had to pay for them. So whenever I got an internship, got money, put money in my pocket, it's like that's that's the way I went. I went five years for my mechanical engineering degree and only had one more year to graduate and I realized that I really wanted to do something with computers or computer programming of some sort. But it was like I'm almost done with this one, it's too late, gotta finish it. So I finished my degree. My story is coming from a mechanical engineering degree to doing trucking, to doing software engineering. And the trucking was just like a you know, limbo area where I was just finding my toes, finding, finding where I really wanted to go and how, I, how was I gonna do it. So like all those times when I was over the road, got a lot of understanding what I really wanted to do in my life. It was a lot of meditation and I'm here now. And that's all really that matters is that I'm doing what I really, really love to do and I'm continuing to do it. And I'm just sharing this information with you guys and hopefully it helps you. Yeah, that's essentially the end of this video. Until next time, make sure you like, subscribe and share this video. And until next time, peace.